Oh, hello. There's there's nothing even on my monitors. Hello, my name is Steven, aka StenForSW, as those of you who know me have come to know me. And if you do know me and you've seen me in other past videos, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, he looks different, or perhaps he looks crazy, or at least he looks crazy different. Well, I'm getting back in front of the camera for this video. You know, I've been doing a lot of uh, commentaries and, you know, unboxings behind the camera. But uh, you may be wondering at this point in the video, what is the point of this video? So, my computer is finished. Almost. And there were a couple things I just wanted to show and talk about because they have to do with what my channel is going to be for the next few months. So here we have my beast of a computer in the Cooler Master Half X case, which I love quite a lot. Um, over here you can see the mess of cords that I'm dealing with hiding away. Uh, I've put lots of features in this case that I need, like I got a special adapter for my card reader. Uh, I had to get this piece like imported from Germany or something. But the card reader was important for me. That's how I get all my video footage. Front intake filter comes off so you can clean it. All sorts of cool stuff. Well made, all around, fantastic gaming case. Best gaming case I've ever worked with so far. But there's one special thing that I want to talk about here. Um, our side panel off. Side. Ah oh, yes, this right here. My SSD array. Check this out. If you have a Cooler Master case, you got one of these pieces. All of these drive bays, it comes with one, two, three, four, five, three point five inch drive mounting bays, but you get one of these. It's a two point five inch drive adapter. Cool thing about this thing is I just realized yesterday that you can mount two SSDs to it, which is cool. So I have both of mine here. This is a Corsair Neutron GTX 240 gigabyte. This is my boot drive. I also store my other programs like the Adobe Editing Suite and iTunes, all the other stuff I need on here. Not my iTunes library, by the way. That's on this. Uh, WD, one terabyte, caviar black. Um, I have an unboxing video for this. I don't know if it's up at the moment, but there is one. I'll link to it if it's available. Uh, same goes for this one. I have a video for this as well. This is the Plextor M5 Pro Series Extreme model. This is pretty new at the time of recording this video. Putting this in is all aluminum, much better finish than this one. Not that that matters at all. But this is a 512 gigabyte. And it is starting to fill up with all my games. Now, I have four hard drives here. Two are going to be going in a new computer. I'm sort of using them temporarily to store my stuff. Because so although I have two terabytes here, it's filled with a lot of junk and i got to go through it. So I've sort of been in limbo not able to have room to install all my games so i plop this bad boy in there and it's like you know it's blazing fast it's one of the fastest ssds on the market right now i think this one is one of the few that can go faster than this but it's one of those trade-off things where like this is faster than this one at some things this is faster than this one at some other things either way boots up really fast and this all my games are loading really fast I used to have Steam on my boot because, you know, Steam starts with Windows, so you want Steam to boot up fast. But I actually installed Steam onto this. This drive is called G for games. I just install Steam on G, and then every time I go to install a game in Steam, it just installs it straight to G, and, you know, it's been working perfectly. I've just been filling it up. So we're going to put this back in here. Really, the only drawback is that the bottom one is upside down, so you have to do some creative twisting of your SATA cables. 
I thought that was going to be a problem, but you know what? I actually did it, and it wasn't at all. So we're going to shove this back in here. I love these, by the way. This is so cool to me. It's like, like these little hard drive bays that slide in and out. It's so science fiction-y. Like, sir, we need to access the mainframe of the uh, Animus or something. There's liquid nitrogen pouring everywhere. <laughs> Overactive imagination, I apologize. There's another feature of this case that I just want to briefly mention I'm really thankful for, and that is this. It's a slider to protect the buttons here. Because late at night, this is your front fan LED on and off. You can turn the red lights off at night if you want. And the fan will keep going. Right below it is reset and then the big power switch. Late at night, I have picked the wrong one. Or, you know, stuff happens, you drop stuff. It's very good to have that, you know, safe. Now we just turned her on. As you can see, it's quite different when it's on. We're using a red and black theme with lots of purple. Both of these two fans are Enermax purple fans. They're actually blue and red on at the same time. That's why they're much brighter. On the top we have purple fans too, but they're not as bright because they're actual purple LEDs which are very dim in the LED spectrum. These used to be a lot brighter because the purple fans from below would shine and increase their purpleness, but it looks like it's mostly blocked by the radiator now, which is okay. And here we have another purple fan. This is another one of the, like, dim actually purple LED fans I was telling you about. Another cool thing about this case that, you know, most people wouldn't care about or notice is uh, the space in this drive bay here is actually perfect so that you can take a 140 millimeter fan as I've done here and just push it into place. And friction just holds it there perfectly. No vibration, nothing. And then we've got our water cooler up there and then the video card and sound card down there. That's a Sound Blaster ZX, and that's a obviously a MSI GTX 770. They're both being cooled by this fan very well. But this was not even what this video is about. All right, so as you can see at my desk, I have three monitors and I do game on these three. It's a bezel corrected resolution of 6000 by 1080p. Nice even number for the resolution. So let me just talk for a second about the Steam summer sale and the high cost of low prices. Um, I bought a lot of stuff. I mean, I didn't buy a lot, but you know, I bought, It's it's funny how a slight discount will make you so much more willing to buy so much more stuff than you would normally spend your money on. Uh, so I bought a few things and I'd just like to go over it. I'm sitting weird because my computer is right next to me and it's huge. My foot is inside my computer right now, getting cooled off by the nice breeze. Uh, one thing, I'm sorry I haven't gotten any like legitimate capturing software set up for recording like what's going on in Windows. I don't feel like doing it right now. So we're just going to do one of these. Hopefully that's good enough for you guys. So the first thing I bought was Half-Life Complete. I noticed because Half-Life 2 was two fifty, price of a candy bar in some places. And each episode was like a buck fifty or something. So I had to get that, but I ended up getting the Half-Life Complete, which is $40 now, for $10. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things. Not all of them are full games, but, you know, amazing deal for $10. That's, 
you know, a dollar each, basically. So I got that. And that was before the Steam sale even started. So I'm already off to a bad start. Alright, so as soon as the summer sale started, uh, the first deals that I picked up were The Witcher. And I got The Witcher Enhanced Edition Director's Cut with all the DLC, and The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings Enhanced Edition. These are $10 and $20 respectively. During the sale, why have you not saved my birthday? Come on. I should remember my birthday now and send me cakes. Um. Mm -mm. During the sale, The Witcher 2 was $5, and the enhanced it, and the first game was 250. So I got both of these games for 750 which is uh, $30 right now, so that's a ridiculously good deal for two, or at least one great RPG, one decent RPG. So I got that. On the same day, I also got the Just Cause bundle. And not only does that include Just Cause 2 with all the DLC, which is $15 right now, But it also includes the first Just Cause. And there's a package for that, Just Cause Collection. Just Cause is uh, $7. The whole collection is $30 right now. I got it for 6 bucks. So, total, for $60 worth of games, two games, Just Cause 1 and 2, and The Witcher 1 and 2, I paid... Thirteen forty-seven for all that. So that's, you know, it's pretty good. I'm excited about that. In the next couple of days, Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition went on sale. Something that's interesting that I noticed about the Steam sale is Fallout New Vegas goes on sale for like this crazy price. You go look at Fallout 3, it's selling for the same price. Same with KOTORs, like, you know, Just Cause. You know, Just Cause the prior game wasn't on the front page of some huge sale doesn't mean that it wasn't on sale also. So Fallout 3, Game of the Year Edition, $20, and Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition, $20. Got each of these for $5. So I spent $10 that day on both complete editions of the Fallout games on... PC, so you know I'll have plenty of fun modding them. Hours and hours and hours of open world post apocalyptic gameplay for $10. Okay, I am tangibly excited about that one. I bought Sanctum 2. Sanctum 2 is a tower defense game that allows you to actually take control and go into first person after you've set up your towers and your turrets and you know, try to, uh, you know, change the tide of battle with your own skill. And that really intrigued me. Uh, my girlfriend was interested in it. She wanted to play it with me, so I bought it. It's, it's $14 now. I got it for seven forty nine. So I got it at half price. fourteen ninety nine. So yeah, I got it at half price. Um, you know, it's not the best deal compared to, you know, that Fallout one, because it's just one game for almost the price of both Fallouts, but it's a newer game, so that's going to happen, and it looks exciting, like, you know, it looks really fun, so I'm excited to dive into that, I'll make a video for it when I first start playing it. Then I got Daysex, it's a joke that I have, it's called Daysex, Afternoon Delight, it's really, uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution. I got the Augmented Edition, which is $30 right now. That includes 40 page art book, making of video, comic, soundtrack. I got that for 5 bucks. The game itself was like 250 but I do want the soundtrack, so I spent the extra 250 for all that extra bonus stuff. Great deal. 
can't wait to play that game. It's a good uh, RPG that I've been wanting to play, and it will be good on the PC, of course. Now, the big thing that I'm super excited about, most excited about of all, and that is Star Wars. In case you don't know, the SW in my username stands for Star Wars. So, I kind of love it. Let's go look at our Steam here. So, which Star Wars game did I get? Well, Steam has something called the Star Wars Collection 2013. And this has all the games available on Steam up until February 22nd, 2013. None have come out since then, so it's completely updated. This is $100 right now. Throughout the week, this would rise and fall from $70 to $50. And, you know, I was thinking about buying it when it was around $60, but I wasn't sure. Basically, Knights of the Old Republic 2 kept going on sale. That was even on the front page uh, on the last day of the sale, on the 22nd. Uh, probably because it was recently added to Steam, you know, it's a pretty big deal, but once again, just because a game isn't on the front page doesn't mean it isn't on sale. So Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was like 329 or something, or 330 Knights of the Old Republic, the first one, was the same price. So that means that all these Star Wars games were on sale. This $100 set was brought down to $49.99. And I picked it up for that beautiful price of $50. Price of individual games is close to $160. You save... $57 when buying this set, so when I bought it, I saved over $107 by buying all these. Includes Star Wars Battlefront 2, Star Wars Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, Star Wars Jedi Knight Mysteries of the Sith, Star Wars Republic Commando. Super excited about that one! Oh, I even heard that there's a hack for Republic Commando where you can put it on all three screens. Super excited about that. Because, you know, first person shooter, it's going to be awesome. So, Republic Commando, Star Wars Starfighter, Star Wars The Clone Wars, Republic Heroes, not that interested in that one, don't even know anything about it. Star Wars The Force Unleashed, Ultimate Sith Edition, love that game. Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, heard it's average, but, you know, I like the combat and the flow of that game a lot. So, stories, whatever, I'll enjoy playing it. I want to try it, so it's good that it's, in, that it's in here. Star Wars Dark Forces, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, and Star Wars Empire at War Gold Pack. This was the most expensive one in the pack. It was like $13, and I wish I could have bought it without it, but, you know, if you're on the PC and you crank the settings all the way up, it's a really good-looking RTS, and it's really fun. And there were a lot of, uh, let's see, there's an old Star Wars RTS that was based almost entirely off of Age of Empires. And I played it a lot. And this will be good nostalgia for going back to that. This has space battles, you know, there's a lot to this game. And the gold pack here has all the DLC, all the extra expansion packs for it. And so that is, that is a good buy. But, you know... Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, I love 2 a lot more than your average person will, uh, just because I actually played it first due to the weird situation I had it when I was a kid. I got my hands on that one first and I fell in love with it, but Knights of the Old Republic 1, that's probably one of the top three games to ever come out for the original Xbox, which is one of the best systems ever made. And, you know, anywhere from 50 to 70 hours per playthrough, and it's extremely enjoyable to do multiple playthroughs because that was when the first games were Bioware, you know, figured out their complex moral choice system, how that affects you and your character, and how your companion characters react to you, and all that sort of stuff. 
for the price of, you know, nipping out to go get an ice cream down the center of town on a hot day. You know, put, put it into that sort of perspective, then, you know, it's awesome. It's great news. So what does all this mean? Well, that, in conjunction with my computer being finished and this new hard drive that I got, I'm going crazy. Like, I've been installing quite a lot of my games. Like, I have... How many do I have? I have 63 games right now, and I've just been going crazy installing them. Because, like I said, I'm so excited to actually have space to install my games. So what is this video, really, besides a look at my computer and the Steam Summer Sale Roundup? Well, it's sort of an overview of the future of this channel. I've seen the trend of YouTube people getting really popular doing gameplay videos, and it's something that I think I can do better than a lot of the people I see doing it. And I would like, you know, it's something that I would like to do. So you'll have to give me a chance to, you know, get better and get more professional with my quality, but, you know, I'd really like to start doing that. Now that my gaming machine is complete, I can. And the first series that I'm going to be starting, that I'm pretty excited about, is called New Game Night. And what that is, is I'll do one, two, maybe three at the most episodes, but sometimes even just one video of a new game. Now, I'll try to keep it a new game, you know, like something recent, like Splinter Cell Blacklist. I'll be doing that as soon as that comes out. But a lot of these games will also be new to me, or somewhat new, like Fallout New Vegas, or, you know, maybe new to other people. Maybe we could have another thing called New Old Game Night, where I play, like, Republic Commando, or Knights of the Old Republic. Basically, what I'll be doing is I'll be starting a new game, and recording and commentating my first experience, starting the beginning of the game, and playing through the beginning of my character first 20 minutes or so you know it depends you know a game like fallout if it's slow in the beginning i'll cut some out to build up some more interesting time in the video so also you know with an older game that's nothing putting that at ultra settings but Splinter Cell blacklist battlefields crises i can max all those out which is Fun. You know, there are some people that do videos of just that, no commentary or anything. Just look at this game on a PC maxed out, because it is pretty awesome sometimes. And so it'll be a combination of that, looking at a new game, maxed out settings on a beast computer. You know, you may be looking at it if you want to purchase it. You, you know, I've watched other videos like this that have made me want to buy a game. You know, there are a million reasons to do a series like this. So it's just another thing that I'm going to have going on at the same time as my other projects. Uh, this leads me to my other point. It's a bit more serious, but I don't want to get serious. So, uh, I lost my job a couple weeks ago. I was laid off. And it was kind of a bullcrap situation, but it's for the best because I didn't like it there anyways. Uh, so I now have more time to do videos and video related things, so I'm going to be investing more of my time into it like I have always wanted. You can see my channel has like a sporadic group of uploads that are, you know, uploaded close together and then nothing for a few months as I just disappear. It's because I was busy with work. So hopefully I'll be busy with this as my work. But to do that, I need your guys' support. And if you like a video, I need you to click that like button. I need you to hit the comments and, like, you know, be engaging. Try to share around. Help me grow because I could really use it. These people I see are partners raking in the cash. I'm not saying that that's the only reason I want to do it, but that is my goal in this is to be making significant chunk of money off of YouTube, not for profit, but to sustain myself to keep making the videos for you guys. 
If I need your guys' help, I'm going to try to keep being as entertaining as possible. And if you guys have any suggestions, just put them in a comment. I love my comments. I read every single one of them. So if you have any questions and you need to get in contact with me, leave a comment on this video or any other one. So yeah, I think that just about wraps it up for today. This video went a bit longer than I thought it would, as with all of them. So, otherwise I thank you for watching, especially if you did watch the whole thing. And, yeah, you know, subscribe. Really subscribe. Really appreciate that subscription. Always do. Really helps me out. So, yeah, once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day and, you know, go play some video games or something. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. Adios, guys. Testing, testing. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Oh, hello, everyone. There's, there's nothing even on my monitors. Uh, hello. I'm Steven. Ow. That was a bit of a delayed reaction, but that hurt. To build up some more interesting time in the video. Um, oh, that's so crazy. Force Unleashed is almost 14 gigabytes, and Republic Commando is 1.2 gigabytes. It's insane. How can a game even fit in 1.2 gigabytes? I guess it makes sense. Half-Life 2 was 2 gigabytes. It's just crazy. Um, what was I saying? Fuck. Damn it!